All right, this is a Husky uh, power washer. Well, it's got a Honda, I think it's a GX90, 190 engine. Keeps starting up and then it wants to stall out after about 30 seconds or so of running. So I'm gonna see what's going on. It looks like it is going extremely lean. So it's kind of what I thought. There's a carburetor issue, so. Air filter looks pretty good. even better yet just go like that and pinch off the line and in theory we should have no fuel leaking out yeah it looks like it works cool There's some stuff in there. See how that jet looks. The jet's probably clogged, is my guess. There it goes. Oh yeah, that jet's pretty clogged up. I can't see any light through that thing. Let's see. Mm. No, it's not really clogged. I can see through it. So it's probably the carburetor itself has a blocked passage of some sort. So what I'll do, remove that screw, and then I will blow compressed air through and see if that solves the stalling issue. Okay. Yeah, there's most likely just dirt that got stuck up inside there somewhere. Someone's been in this thing before. I'll probably go through the valves on this thing too, just in case. Let's see. Throw this thing back together and then uh, move on to the valves. I put that jet. There it is. Uh, that jet's pretty clean. I'm going to go blow it out anyways, though. There's no use that jet back in there. It's not cross It's not <laughs> There we go. So carburetor um, can go back on, but first I think what I'm gonna do is check out the valves and just see if they're tight because because it'll run for about, like I said, 30 seconds and then it wants to uh, die out. So usually it's an indicator of valves, but I figured I'd go through the carburetor too anyways while I'm at it. The main reason I decided to tilt it back was so that way oil was spilling out because these are, uh, these engines just basically throw oil upwards. They don't have an oil pump or anything, so all the oil that they splash up just sits in the top. And you pull the oil cover, 
the valve cover or it will just fall out. valve cover off and I'm looking at the valves um, whenever you pull these off always remember you need to have some sort of gray RTV silicone around or, or not silicone a gray RTV um, around or Honda bond or Yama bond is what you typically want to use on this um, you can probably get away with making a gasket out of um, some gasket material however I don't know how well that would work Turn this thing over to top dead center. Oops, passed it, so I have to go around again. That might actually be top dead center there. <laughs> Looks like the piston is sitting right up. That should be loose, and that should be loose. Okay. Those feel about right. I'm gonna measure them anyways. Let's see what they call for, because the exhaust one seems Oh. Yeah, those feel like they're all right so i'm just gonna double check real quick on the line okay so i found out um intake needs to be six thousandths exhaust needs to be eight thousandths six and eight thousandths right here let's measure it real quick and it can be plus or minus two thousandths so if it's uh say four and it's supposed to be six that sh should still be just fine or if it's six and it's supposed to be eight that's supposed to, that's just fine too or if it's <clears throat> say for example if your exhaust valve is supposed to be eight and it's uh, 10 or 11 that's also fine but you want to be within that range and this one is an eight fits in there pretty freely the intake an eight fits in there pretty damn freely so that's that's okay um let's see I should not be able to fit a 14, which I can, and I can't. So the intake, I can't fit a 14. The exhaust, I can't. So the exhaust, I need to tighten up a little bit. Fit a nine in there, that fits in freely. If I can fit a 10, that still can go, but that's still a little loose for the intake in my opinion. So I can fit a 10 in there pretty easily. 11, I can fit in there pretty easily. A 12, a 12 fits in there still. So I'm gonna tighten up the intake and I'm gonna tighten up the exhaust to their factory specs, which is six and eight. All right, I got my nine millimeter wrench. Break that loose. And then I will break this one loose as well. Typically you wanna get something to hold that, but what I do, it's a little square thing. I think like a four millimeter or something like that fits it. So what I usually do is I'll just kind of back it off just a tiny bit. So that way when the wrench tightens down on it and if it spins, which luckily it does not look like it's spinning. Got just a tiny bit of drag on there. So that's good. Double check to make sure I did it right. Uh, plus or minus 2,000, so let me see if I can get a 10 in there. A 10 in there fits. I'm gonna try an 11. And 11 is super tight, so I'm just gonna tighten it up just a tad bit more. just about too tight and an 11 should not even go in there yeah I can't even fit the 11 so that's good so now let's move on to the intake side get my feeler gauge in there and then I'm going to snug that up Snug enough. 
Now I'm just going to give it just a tiny bit of pressure, just ever so slightly. There we go. And that's about the tension I want. So basically, rule of thumb, if you hear it sounding like um, you're cleaning a window with Windex, when you put your feeler gauge in and out, it's too tight. Nine should not even fit. Nope, I can't even get the nine in there, so that's good. Um, a seven should be really tight. It'll sound like um, you're cleaning Windex, uh, cleaning a window with Windex is the best way to describe it, I guess. If you hear that sound, that means that it's just a little too tight, but with the six where it's supposed to be, it's perfect. So we'll get the valve cover back on with some uh, gray um, high torque RTD and uh, put the new spark plug in it. All right, I got the gray high torque RTD on here and the valves are adjusted. I can put the valve cover back on. So the proper way when you're using a uh, gray RTV or actually any RTV um, or Honda Bond or Yamaha Bond, it's almost all the same stuff. However, um, you want to make sure you don't tighten down the bolts completely. You want it to set up for about 20 or 30 minutes and then you go in and torque your bolts or tighten your bolts to how they need to be. All right, it runs good now. I just tested it. However, there's a small oil leak, but that's an easy fix. That was just because I forgot to tighten down the valve cover all the way, but that's, once again, super easy repair, and that's why I test things before I have customers pick them up. So tomorrow, he should be happy, and yeah.